And welcome everybody, this is Mr. Joseph, and thank you for joining me this evening for another epic edition of Let's Play Gothic 3! Woohoo! Okay, I was just kidding, folks. Okay, uh... I don't know, I was kind of in a mood. Okay, where... welcome back to Gothic 3, I was just having a little fun there. Uh, thanks for watching. This is Let's Play Gothic 3 by Mr. Joseph. And uh, actually, really, um, on tonight's episode, what we're going to do is we're going to, first we're going to go over to the Ardea area, using the telephone, teleport stone. And uh, then, what we're going to do is just clear out this valley area of... Um, dirty, stinking apes and whatnot. Okay, not apes, but you know what I mean. Um, scavengers, wolves, and, and the like. Um, the truth is, I'm not yet able to skin things that I want to skin in order to get a lot of animal kills right now. So if I see, like, deer, I'm going to ignore them for now. But uh, as far as scavengers go, they're fair game. And wolves, I'll kill them if I have to. And, uh, I might also skip ahead if it gets a little bit tedious and unexciting. Meaning I might, um, you know, do some of this off-camera off once we get into the swing of it here. But I just want to give you a sense of, you know, how do you make sure you've covered an area and gotten all the, the goodies, you know, the plants and the chests and the animal, um, animal resources. Well, this is how you do it. You do, do it systematically. Uh, location by location, usually geographical boundaries can help. And uh, in this case, what I've done is I've already gotten that upper layer. Remember that from I think it was last time, or maybe the time before. Well, now we're going and doing the lower side. And you can tell I haven't been here yet because of the existence and prevalence of plants like that. But I think anything basically up up in this area, I've been, you know I went that way at one point. And just for reference, uh, you can probably tell, but it's very early in the morning. It is uh, 6.58, and so the sun is rising. It's kind of beautiful. I take out the snake. Might as well. A little bit of experience there. Also, by the way, uh, in order to get my next level, I need about 1,400 points. So not that much um, to get up there. And if I get up there, I can go ahead and skin uh, the animals that I want to skin, like these wolves here. And <clears throat> and so that would be very helpful. That's a lot of wolves to take on at once. One way to kind of separate them, if you're looking for a tip here, is you approach one of them close enough so that he looks at you like that. And notice how he's the only one looking at me. Okay. Let him look at you for just a minute. I'm going to push F5 while he's looking at me. And okay, as that comes back on, he's going to start coming towards me here. Yep. Yep, there he comes. There he goes. And see, all of his compadres are going away. So now I've got just the one wolf to worry about here. Uh, and he's definitely going for me. But you see that none of his uh, friends are with him, so at least it's not an impossible battle. And that is how you separate and kill wolves. Now you can do that if you need to. Or you can kind of catch them all by themselves, like that guy there. And uh, you can use your bow and arrow and stuff. Theoretically, if I'm uh, persistent and accurate enough, I can go ahead and take out this wolf with my arrows alone and want to do melee battle, which is a little bit safer. Especially if the wolf gets caught up on the uh, rock heights there, like it appears is happening there. Okay, just one more shot should do it. There we go. Now, I want to be careful about how many of these guys I take out before I get my next level, because if Again, if I push C, I only need um, 1250 at this point to get up to the next one. And if I can make that 1250 off of scavengers and things, uh, hares and, and snakes and blood flies, as opposed to uh, wolves, then I'll have a much better uh, economically uh, better off. Okay, run away, run away. Okay, for some reason I fired an extra arrow there. I want to be careful of that. Where'd he go? Where's the blood fly? Okay, he left. That was weird. He was not in it for, in it to win it, as it were. Oh, there he is. Okay, we're just gonna take him out. There we go. 
And I'm going to try to get that hair. I mean, this is the mark of a really good hunter, is if you can get a small animal from a distance. Close. It's kind of fun, though. I really like this game's um, archery system. I think it's very intuitive and fun to, to play around with. Okay, I'm just going to get this wolf. There we go. Let's hope his friends don't join him. One more to the face should do it. There we go. And there's a blood fly. I'm going to try to get the blood fly from a distance. There we go. Notice how my adjustment for distance and gravity changes as the enemy gets closer and comes from different angles. If they're coming from below you, you really don't need to adjust for gravity that much. But if they're coming from above you, you really do. Also, if they're farther away, you need to adjust more. And if they're close up, you really need to adjust at all, as in the case of these two rabbits that I just killed. Now you might think, well, Joseph, why are you killing all these little, this small game? You're never going to get enough experience, and you're, you're just going to be stuck at this point forever as far as not having the next level. Well, I'll tell you something, that is absolutely not true. Because in just this little, small amount of time, I've probably gained, you know, four or 500 experience. By pushing C again, you can see that I'm now... 1070 away from the next level, which is not as much as 1250, which was what the last time I checked was. So, you know, they really do add up over time. You just got to keep at it. And I bet you I could get this next level by just clearing this valley alone, even if that means sacrificing a few wolf skins and the like. I can assure you there will be plenty of other opportunities to get wolf skins. And I bet you there's a lot of players who don't even bother with the hairs, and I don't entirely blame them because it is kind of a low experience, low value kill. And maybe they, they like bunnies. And I, I like bunnies too, I, you know. But this is a game. And each little kill counts towards experience. I'm actually going to go over here and clear out this cave. I think there's uh, We never did quite clear out that cave, did we? So I'm going to go clear out that cave real quick. And this blood fly. By the way, if you just release the arrow without holding back the bowstring very much, It'll kind of die out on you, but if you're really close to something that's wimpy like a rabbit, you can really get away with that. So I'm going to go ahead and kill this blood fly real quick. I feel like when the blood flies were actually red, it was easier to kill them. As I take him down. Okay. Another thing I really want to do at some point in the very near future is, since I don't have the requisite thieving skills right now, to do much, um, I'd like to go ahead and, uh, oh shoot, there we go, I'd like to go ahead and learn the magic uh, workaround for picking, ch I'm going to quick save, which is to learn how to, um, which is to learn how to cast the spell called open chest, now I've got, I had a scroll that we did that with once, but and I don't remember for the life of me what's in this cave. But I think I hear something. Oh boy. Got the uh, battle music coming out there. It's a lurker. Now if I learn how to skin reptile hides, I think it's reptile hides, I can actually skin lurker skins. But they're really not that valuable. And I really don't care about losing out on that too much. So I'm just going to go ahead and kill him. Oh, we got more. Run away. Okay, I did get their claws at least. So that's something. By the way, eventually you'll learn how to make transformation potions, not that I use them very much because I don't really care for them, but um, you're going to need some sort of material component from the animal that you want to transform into, and I think for lurkers it is their uh, claws. They're kind of scary looking, but they're really not that tough of enemies, as you can see by the fact that I don't mind meleeing him. Go and grab their claws here. And actually, they, they provide a fair amount of experience, so that's not bad. I already killed that snake, okay. So, pushing C again. You can see I'm within range now. I've got 700 points to go. Uh, F5 in here, and I'll kill this wolf real quick. Okay, killing the wolf. 
One of the reasons I'm taking out the wolves this episode is because I don't like wolves traveling in packs. So if I can get them while they're isolated, it makes my life a little bit safer overall, even, even during those times where I'm not really looking to kill things. It kind of does save me a little bit of trouble. And it's nice to have the meat for healing purposes. I'm going to go ahead and push uh, six. Grab myself a chunk of roast meat here. See if there's any more lurkers in here. Okay. A little bit of lag there. Oh no, lurker! Reminds me of... Uh, the website Stickcam. I don't know if anybody else used to use Stickcam, but you got these people who would follow your uh, webcam without putting a screen name in, and they would be called lurkers. I think is what the community convention was, which I always thought was kind of nice. Basically, they're old perverts who wanted to get on, you know, young people's webcams and watch, you know, see if they take the clothes off or whatever. I don't know. Anyway, okay, so we're just clearing out this cave. Got another lurker. And uh, I'm not sure if there's any more enemies in here, but okay, it doesn't look like it. What's that noise? Did you hear that Too noise? Hard. Okay, I need a better lock picking there. Okay, I'm gonna push control. It actually saves me a lot of time when I pick up mushrooms if I crouch first because it just it uh, gets rid of the animation. Also, by the way, just a little tip. If I push escape and I go to options and I go to controls and I go to custom here, uh, let me um, look up something real quick. I want to. Take all. Take all is Y. Okay. So I want to. Um, I want to try something and I can't try it right now because I already took the contents of that chest, but I want to try pushing Y next time I'm at a chest and see if I can just take the contents of the chest without uh, opening it. I was looking on some other videos and I think that's possible so looks, hopefully I'll remember to do that next time. Okay so I've cleared that cave pushing C here I've got 590 points to go until the next level at which point I'm gonna go back up the hill and learn from the dude up in the stone circle there how to skin these guys. Okay, that is a whole pack of wolves. So again, use the technique where you get one to look at you. They're all feasting on that one scavenger and they're all really busy doing that. So I'm going to avoid that for right now. I'm going to grab this plant and grab this chest real quick with keeping my one eye on these guys behind me. That is a death trap waiting to happen. There's a fireball spell that's useful. Now, you know, the farther down here you go, the closer you get to those orcs, and really the closer you get to the border of your effective exploration range for now. But, you know, just be careful not to get too close, I guess is what I'm saying. Grabbing these chests real quick. Oh, I was going to show you how to do the uh, take all. Okay, so here I am at the chest. I'm going to push control, and then I'm going to push Y. Okay, the Y didn't work. Let me try this. Okay, when I opened the chest, I went ahead and pushed Y rather than click take all. That did save a little bit of time, and I think there's a way you can go ahead and take the chest without doing the, the open the chest animation, but I, I need to work on that. So, if I push crouch, right click, one. Well, it did seem to open it faster, I guess, but now I'm just not getting what I want. I'll work on that, guys, and I'll get back to you. Okay, those wolves are kind of guarding that chest there, so I'm just going to kind of move on. We only have a couple more areas of this valley to explore anyway, and so I'm going to go ahead and explore it. And maybe I can even save that wolf pack for, you know, skinning purposes, if I can get my skinning skill before I have to take them out. I mean, it's going to happen. I'm going to take them out. It's just a question of what order I do it in. Okay, I think we've pretty much cleared this entire area here. Because I remember that giant rock in the background. That one is where those bandits were. But I don't think we've really gone too far this way, kind of in the interior of this field. So I'm just going to sweep through the interior of the field and grab like some of these plants that it looks like I missed. I think that little ridge right there is where I had previously walked. Yeah, I think I've been across this. Yeah, because there's a dead blood fly. So I've been up there. I'm just going to go down to these lowland areas and kind of look around for plants. 
like these over here. Grab the plants. And then maybe come back for those wolves. I don't know. Get this snake here. Snake in the grass. Another 20 experience. Every little bit helps. Okay. Ogre leaf. And a scavenger. Get this meat. Scavengers are wussy, and I almost feel bad for them as a species because they did not have a chance against all the wolves that were roaming around here. Okay, so I think I've pretty much cleared this field with the exception of those wolves and that one plant. And I think that's going to be enough for me right now. So I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, just finish this video up here and call it an episode. Um, I think maybe next time I'll go down... Oh, there's really two options. I could go work on the coast or I could go head out to Montera, maybe come back to the coast later. I think that's what I'm going to do, because the coast has lurkers, and I want those lurker skins, so I want to gain another level before I go down there. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Um, yeah, I'm going to head towards Montera. Or maybe I'll go get... There's a couple of caves. Yeah, so I'll go up to the caves up on that ridge up there. I'm going to head up there. And in fact, I'm going to head up there a little bit before we go ahead and turn it over to a new episode. I'm just being thorough here and just thoroughly exploring, getting everything I can. I know I saw a mushroom over here. Where'd that mushroom go? There it is. Okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to head over to that ridge up there. This is a ridge that is near Ardea heading towards Montero, which means it's kind of going, I guess, what, what, do you, what do you want to call it, north? Where's my compass? Why isn't my compass out? Did the update mods take, take away uh, the compass map? Yeah, this is, so north would be kind of more that way. So this is kind of a north and a west. Yeah, because I'm going to go up this this uh, path up here. Yep. Okay, so if you remember, this is where the guy with the lamp oil uh, quest was. Ios, or Enos, or whatever his name Not Enos, but Iota, something like that. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and go up here, but I'm going to, instead of going up to the left where the lamp oil guy was, and where we're eventually going to go to get to Montera, I'm going to go this way and see what's up here. So next time in Gothic 3, we'll go ahead and just do that area. So thanks for watching, and if you've been watching, just remember, Professor Snuggles is looking out for you.